So we, we need to have a deep conversation on how to root Christians. Because many believers are excited in the things of the Spirit, but they are not rooted, right? But he says that there's something that will come on account of the Word. So I charge you that these things you're getting excited about and writing notes in your phone or your notebook, those things are going to test you. The other option you have is not to learn the Word at all, such that whatever comes, it kills you instantly. Because there is more price with ignorance to pay. It's always more expensive when you're ignorant. Are you following what I'm saying? It's always more expensive when you are ignorant. So, trouble comes. When trouble comes. Read your Bible. The Bible says when trouble comes. He didn't say if trouble comes. He doesn't say supposedly trouble came. It says when trouble comes. Because the way of life has defined that trouble will come to us all. That is the inevitable conversation that every mature Christian should understand. That's the conversation that everyone who is starting to walk this life of salvation should appreciate. Trouble, testations, challenges, attacks are not an if or may or could. They are a must. We only defer in the attacks. But they must come. You have to prepare yourself. You have to prepare yourself. The Bible says in Isaiah, when you go through the waters, Isaiah did not say, if you go through the waters, or supposing you go through the waters. He says, when thou passest through the waters. He promised, I will be with you. When you go through the floods or the rivers, he says, they shall not overflow you. He said, when you walk through the fire, he didn't say, if you walk through the fire, he said, when you walk through the fire, he says, thou shall not be burned and neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. It's, it's, it's simple. It will come. When it comes, he has promised how you'll go through it. Now, some of you probably are quick at judging people who are in their flames now. Ah, that person didn't pray well. We thought that this sister had understood, but the way she's living, it seems like she, she didn't get the revelation that I have. Oh no, darling, give it some time. You can't tell next year, you can't tell next week, but one day you will wake up to a flame too. And you might need to prove yourself. You might probably accelerate in one area and forget that there are also areas that you're going to be tested with and you're going to be tested. It's only a matter of time. So, Christianity fundamentally then awakens us to the reality of expecting whatever should come but the guarantee that we must win. We must win. Because with the tribulations and trials, is also the purification of our faith. The purification of our faith. Because to God, the Bible says, it's more important than gold. It's First Peter 1, 7. He says, the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. Though it be tried with fire. So, you see, the fire has to come that it might be found and to praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So these things that come, you've been diagnosed with this, you have been fired, you're challenged, you have challenges in your finances, you know, people are poking at you and you're saying, oh, what did I do? All of these things are preparing a certain individual. It's like I was sharing once with a uh, some people and I told them, you know, when I just started uh, this work, for example, the, the place of persecution, when I just started this work, I was so innocent, so innocent because the people who raised me, uh, my first pastors, uh, the Mawages, Posema's parents, there are things they never showed us growing up. They never showed us those things. Pastor Maweje, John, 
had never sat us down to discuss another minister. We never knew it. So you grew up in that innocence that no, ministers don't discuss each other. You, you might take for granted that innocence, but we never knew it. You understand? So there were many things we didn't know. Then I went to another wonderful church, which also shielded us from so much. And then we get into ministry and then the anointing starts to flow. Then persecution comes. Oh, and I remember one of those days I went in one room and then lay frustrated because I felt I'd been betrayed by some men of God and I wept, God, what should I do? And then I, I later examined and realized I had to actually go through that. Now, I honestly don't lose sleep over a tabloid. I honestly cannot tell you that somebody can write something about me on the internet and then I lose sleep and then I tell my wife, oh, baby, see what they're doing to me. I'm past that level. There's things God has dealt with. The skin is thick in and out and harder than you think. I've built backbone. You know why? Because I have known him which is from the beginning. I've understood how the God from a certain place. Huh? He speaks of fathers which have known him from the beginning. We understand the order of things. It's a very important aspect when he talks to fathers as they which have known him. He says, I speak to you as fathers because you have known him from the beginning. I know, I understand the pattern and order of things. I have the grace now to uh, uh, interpret what some things come with and they end because I know I have a certain understanding now. I'm not intimidated anymore. But I had to go through that process. Some of you, the things you have gone through and you can relate with my story, they began so hard. But over time, God has built a certain character in you. He has built a certain character in you that it's not a big deal if you don't have food. You won't denounce God and you know sell your body because you don't have food. Something has built in you. You know, you understand. Those things of oh, I'm not going to serve. Yeah? Sister Ophelia offended me. Not real name, not real name. Okay. Sister Ophelia offended me. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna serve. You mature to a certain place where it doesn't matter who is offending you. You know who you're serving and you keep the course. Yeah? But then we have those ones who say, oh no, me, I'm not going to come back to the choir. Someone so treated me so badly. Ah, oh, darling, you have a long journey. You're going to find worse. All of this was working to the building of your faith. And that to God is very precious than the prevailing circumstances. Nothing was sent to you was designed to destroy you. Nothing. The Bible says, no temptation that has befallen us save that which is common to man. It's very important, firstly. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able that means everything testing you, God had to first look at your strength, your tenacity, your ability, how much fortified and able you are to overcome the challenge. And he told it, okay, try my son and see. Try my daughter and see. You will understand that this one, look at the temptation of, 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 of Job. Now before Job is tempted, God is boasting over him. Have you conceived that? My servant. You see, God boasting over you. So what you think is killing you and you're spending overnight sweeping over. God already boasted that you can beat it. Come on! It's in the faithfulness of God not to try you beyond that which you are able. When it comes, the first impression in your spirit should be, God allowed this because I'm able to do, to deal with it. Oh, see the beginning of things. Hallelujah. 